Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Hello, everybody. This is Howard Fox, your host of the Success Insight podcast. I hope wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you are having a fantastic day. Our guests today on the Success Insight podcast are author Dan Pegram. Dan has authored the book, Pop Pop Airplane, How Do You Fly? Dan is now the president of Contrail Creations, which is dedicated to children's education, literacy, and marketing. And joining us as well today is Mike Richardson, who is the illustrator of Pop Pop Airplane, How Do You Fly? And just a little bit of a side note, Mike is Dan's nephew. So, Dan and Mike, welcome to the Success Insight Podcast. Thank you, Howard, for having us on today. First, I want to congratulate you both. You had your book launch party this week for Pop Pop Airplane. How did it go? Oh, we had a great evening last night. We had a huge crowd of people. I think the energy was really high in the room. We had lots of children there, and and it was so cool when the kids came up to the table when Mike and I were signing books, and they just had so much excitement in their eyes, and it was just such a pleasure having all those folks there and excited about our new book. That's fantastic. And again, heartfelt congratulations. And this is like the perfect time of the season to publish the book and have it launched. So I just think it's phenomenal. And the illustrations and scenes in the book are fantastic. So, but I'd love if you would share with our listeners, Dan, what inspired you to write a children's book? Well, Howard, last year when I retired from Southwest Airlines, retired from the Air Force, and then I retired from Southwest Airlines, I thought I was pretty much finished and was just going to play golf, travel, and just enjoy myself, but just needed something to fill the void. So my wife and I talked about it, and she encouraged me to write a kid's book on flying and starting out with how airplanes fly. So looking for some other inspiration, my grandson Camden and I were always outside when we were out at his house and they are in the traffic pattern for Love Field and DFW up in the northern side of Dallas and he would look up in the sky and point to the airplanes knowing that I was a pilot and say pop pop airplane pop pop airplane and so that's where the character Pop Pop was born from, was just from the mind of the two-year-old. That is actually a very cute story. And I think it's interesting that you have the airplanes and fire engines, trucks, the old big excavation dump trucks. I think that fascinates kids, But whether it's little boys, little girls. And I just think that's phenomenal. Your grandson just seeing the airplanes and the contrails up in the sky. And I'm sure they were always doing it as they were growing up. Yes. So I've got a question now with the book. Tell us how it's organized. What are you going into detail uh, in the book to share with your audience or or, or preschoolers, correct? Around that age range? Yes. And my goal is for grandparents, parents, aunts, uncles, friends, anyone that wants to read a book to children that's a learning book that teaches them something, they can read this book to the kids. And we also arrange the book so that for the kids who are just learning how to read, it should be very easy for them to learn how to read this book. And it was kind of an interesting story. A friend of mine over in Dallas was called me early this week and said that his young son was reading the book to him while he was taking him to school. And he said, what a fantastic role reversal. He said it was such a fun experience. That is very nice. That is very nice. So I've got to ask your nephew there, Mike, this is quite the project that you were on. And I'm curious how this collaboration started. I mean, kind of share a little bit about that. Well, my uncle Dan reached out to me about last October, close to almost a year ago, and mentioned that he had an idea for a book coming up and was just curious if I would be interested in illustrating it. And, you know, of course, I was all super excited about it, getting the opportunity to come up with a character concept and something I'd never really done before in my career as an artist. And So we just kind of went back and forth and discussed his idea for the look of the character and kind of the storyline of how he wanted to 
educate kids on everything. And so we just kind of came up with some rough concept drawings and I took his ideas and kind of melded it with some stuff that I thought would be cool, like adding in the captain's hat to give the character a little bit more fun, make it a little more personified, if you will, and just try to make it come to life. And I love about some of the illustrations. I, I wish our listeners could actually see what, what I'm looking at it. And we're, we're going we're gonna to give you the links to Dan's website so you can kind of see in some illustrations and obviously the social sites as well. But these are really cute drawings. And I love the hat, but what I have to tell you I really love is that big red nose and the smile. I mean, it's just like so engaging. Uh, Mike, before we kind of go deeper into the makings of the book, you are uh, the illustrator, but what's your background? And what is this type of artwork your business? I mean, I'm curious there. Yeah, so I started out drawing as a kid. That was always like one of my big things to do. I just, I used to get lost for hours and just blank pages and I would draw over everything that I could. I mean, I drew on my parents' walls. I drew, I drew on the walls at school. I, I just, I drew everywhere I could. And, you know, sometimes I got in trouble for it, but sometimes I won awards for it. So I just kind of kept pursuing it all through my childhood up to middle school, high school art classes. And from there, I won some recognition in high school and got a lot of push from teachers that I had art classes with to kind of pursue it through college. So I just, I kept going through college and taking different illustration classes and fine art classes. And I do a lot of stuff the traditional way, just drawing things out by hand and then kind of taking it into the computer and trying to really take the the hand aspect and make it come to life digitally. I also have a, a background in graphic design, so that's kind of where the computer side of things came in. Sure. You know, I have to say, my guess is you're one of the reasons why Crayola came up with the washable crayons for kids writing on the wall. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and now my kids are giving me a little payback. They're still starting to color on the walls too. So I can't get too mad at them for it. <laughs> there you go. So Dan, in the book now, I mean, as you start to break the book apart, how many pages do we have in the book? It's about... I think it's about 24 pages. 24 pages. And each page, you're, are you dissecting the plane into the various parts? How is, it, how is this organized? Yes. What we do in the beginning of the book is that we introduce my grandson, is running through his backyard, and he has a little toy airplane in his hand. He has this little aviator helmet on and his goggles, and he's running through the backyard saying, pop, pop airplane, how do you fly? How do you soar so high in the sky? And so then on the next page, we introduce the character Pop Pop. My name's Pop Pop Airplane. I'm painted silver and blue. I have so much I want to share with you. And then from there... Pop Pop is holding class in a big hangar for children, and he's teaching them about himself, about his engines, about his wings, and about his ailerons and his elevators and his rudder. And then we tell the kids by obvious pointing and, and through the illustrations, each part of the airplane and what their function is. I kept it as simple as I possibly could. And what I love about what Mike did with the illustrations is that if Pop Pop is not pointing to something, then the children are pointing to something in each of the illustrations. We made the print large so that if parents can't find their cheaters and they want to read to their children, then that's no problem. And we have it highlighted in white, so it's very easy to see. And also, children learn through the visual illustrations in a book. And the words and the illustrations absolutely have to match up. So that was the other thing that we really wanted to emphasize, was that whatever we're talking about, the children get it right away because of the big illustrations. Is there a piece of this book, I mean, one of the pictures, one of the, the, the pieces of equipment, I mean, as a pilot, I mean, I'm just like amazed. I, I love, I don't like being in airports. I don't, but I love being on an airplane and just the feeling of leaving the gate, going down to the runway and taxiing, and then that takeoff and that landing and kind of watching the wing retract. And you, you're going to correct the, the technical term, but you're basically adjusting the wings for your airspeed. And it just is amazing to me. Is there a part of the 
this experience that really just gets your blood pumping in a positive way. It's like, I love this. I love the feel of this. Is there one aspect of the flight or is it just all around just being around the airplane and in the cockpit? Well, it, it really is just the overall experience. But, but the excitement is when you push away from the gate and you start taxiing out to the runway and you line up on the runway and you hear the rumble of the engines and you know that something is about to happen. And then you start accelerating and you feel the force on your body. And then the airplane lifts off the ground and you, and you suddenly feel the sensation of flight. And now the airplane is pointed up into the sky. And what, a, what an exhilaration that is. I got that every time I flew, and I had 13,000 hours of flying by the time I finished, but every takeoff was very exciting for me. And also, landing is the same way. It's a delicate operation, landing an airplane, but to land an airplane smoothly on the ground and satisfying your customers, to me, was the high five, if you will, at the end of the flight. And I tell you, with Southwest Airlines, if we'll put a plug in, because that's where you spent the second part of your amazing career. I love Southwest. So I'm perhaps you were even my my captain on one flight wherever you were flying. You know, I, I love as you were kind of describing the taxiing back, getting to the runway and just making the turn and just seeing the the length of that runway with the runway lights going and just revving up that plane. And I'm looking at some of the illustrations and you kind of imagining your grandchildren, they've got the, for the sake of a better word, the Superman cape behind them, and they've got their hands out. And I think I remember doing this as I was a kid, just playing an airplane in the backyard. And, and I would imagine, too, this is going to be really good for kids to get them excited to learn about not only flying, but just to be comfortable around airplanes. And any other reactions from the kids or say your grandkids as you were creating the book, or did you kind of, you and Mike kind of keep it under wraps until it was a done deal? Well, we pretty much kept it under wraps. And after Mike and I spent about an hour and a half on the phone, I just turned him loose. He knew pretty much what I, what I was thinking and what my concept was and my vision for the book. So I just turned him loose to use his own imagination. And that's a very accurate term, his own imagination with the illustrations in the book. And I mean, he absolutely hit it out of the park. I was almost in tears whenever he sent me some of the drawings, the initial drawings. I, I just couldn't believe what a fantastic job he had done and how he brought this whole concept to life. I'm curious, Mike, so when you got the call from your uncle, and he says, I, I got an idea I'd like to talk to you about. Did you have any inkling of what this idea really was going to entail? Definitely not at first. I mean, it it was kind of all a, a big surprise. I mean, and then when we got to talking about it, I just, the imagery just started popping into my head almost immediately. I mean, that's, that's just kind of the way that my mind works. As soon as somebody starts talking about an image and just a rough idea. It's like I start getting all these pictures in my mind and I just sit down and start running with it. But I mean, it's just, it's been a great process. I mean, the collaboration between the two of us and just kind of going back and forth, talking about the character and just figuring out how to bring it to life. I mean, it's just, it's such a fun process. What do you think the most challenging part of the process was for you? One is say as an artist, but also collaborating with Dan. Now, I don't want to have a conversation about, did you get along or did you butt heads any? Because that's not, there's always a little curiosity there in some interviews. However, I mean, you, you, it sounds like it was a great collaborative relationship, but I'm curious about some of the challenges you faced as you were bringing Dan's ideas to life. The biggest challenge between starting the idea of creating a character is always kind of having a unified look throughout the initial idea for how this character is supposed to be portrayed. And just kind of when you start doing multiple pages of drawings related to this character and showing the character in different poses or different scenes and just trying to keep that look consistent, that's always the most difficult part of everything is just making sure that this character looks the same throughout the story. The, the use of the pages and I mean, the color in the book, the, again, to our listeners, I'm just, I'm looking at Dan's website and I'm looking at JPEG images of the book of pages within the book and the colors are just amazing. And 
this the, the way the kids are, as you had said earlier, Dan, they're pointing up to various parts of the airplane, you know, whether it's the wing and, okay, what are those little things in the back by the tail? What are, the, what are those little mini wings called? The little elevators. Is that what the elevators? Okay. Yeah. There's like a little girl pointing up to the tail of the, so that those are the elevators? Yes. Okay. Okay. So for someone like me who, okay, I love flying, but I have no idea. What is an elevator? What's that purpose? Well, the elevator is just the surface on the back of the airplane that helps the airplane control its pitch, whether you want to climb or descend. The elevator is what changes the direction of the airplane and gets it started either climbing or descending. Okay, very good. So if I am a young child or you had used the example earlier of a friend calling you and saying, I was taking my child to school and they're reading the book. What other lessons, takeaways are you hoping to have children take away from the book as they're learning about the topic, reading, any other particular lessons that jump out for you? Well, one of the our main goals is to familiarize children with airplanes because you know we are a mobile society now and and families travel by air primarily that's their primary mode of transportation now and so for children even children who who have traveled on airplanes and for the young travelers we want to educate them about an airplane and the control surfaces on the airplane and how the airplane lifts off the ground and the things that make it fly so that with that new education and new knowledge there's a level of comfort that comes with the children about oh okay, I've read about this and now I know what these things are and I kind of know what the airplane is doing. Or, you know, if they see an airplane turning, they see a little aileron out on the wing, either move up or down. And, they, and you know, now the light bulb comes on in their head and goes, that's an aileron out there and it's turning the airplane. It's very interesting. I, I'm, I'm actually thinking I need to buy the book for myself, but I have great nieces and nephews that would love this as well. You know, it, Thinking about the with the book now, and maybe if we could take circle back a little bit to your experience. So you spent a, an entire career in the Air Force, and what was the plane that you were flying in, in the Air Force? After pilot training, I went out to California, and I learned how to fly the KC-135 air refueling tanker. And that's the primary airplane that I flew the rest of the time I was in the Air Force. And it, it was a very, very fun job. I got to fly that airplane all around the world, and the air refueling operation is one of the most interesting things that I've ever been involved in. When you have an airplane come up behind our airplane, and we actually make contact with that airplane with the air refueling boom and transfer gas to our receiver aircraft. And sometimes we'd be surrounded by multiple aircraft, the small fighter type aircraft. We could have up to eight aircraft on us at one time. And it was just such a rewarding job knowing how important what we were doing was. I don't mean to diminish this, but it's you, you were like a flying gas station if you have 10 fighters around you. <laughs> we, absolutely, we absolutely were. Uh, absolutely. And that's what the guys who were our receivers felt like. And we were the best friend they had when we were out over the ocean doing a cross-ocean flight, either across the Atlantic or the Pacific. And they never very, went very far from us on our flights. Oh, I can imagine that. And and I, I just to be a little bit flippant, did anybody ask you for an oil change or to kind of uh, clean the window? Oh, they were always, the, the, you know, the guys are real characters anyway. They'd say, hey, can you check the oil and get that windshield while you're at it? And, you know, <laughs> boom operator would come back with some, with some fun comment. It, it was a fun, fun job and a great, great time in my life. I can only imagine. We have the, up here in Chicago, the Air and Water Show every year. And and I know we we have the the, the KC one thirty fives flying, and it's just it's such a big airplane. It just the fighter airplanes are nice, but it's the big ones that I really love because it doesn't look like they're going very fast, and just the mechanics of keeping that plane in the air just it just totally amazes me. It's kind of like the bigger commercial jets. Just the ability to take off and land, it's so smooth. And so then you went on and you had a very nice career with Southwest Airlines, eh? I was very fortunate to get hired by Southwest. When I retired from the Air Force, I didn't think that I would find a job that was as satisfying or an environment to work in that I loved as much as being in the Air Force until I met the folks at Southwest Airlines. 
And I felt like I had just come home whenever I joined Southwest Airlines as pilot. They're like a huge family, and they took great care of us throughout my entire almost 21 years with them. Fantastic. So I, I am curious. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but being a re- retired military, we're now retired from Southwest, you have this wonderful kids book about flying. Are any of these books going to end up in the back seats of the of these airplanes at Southwest? Well, I'm honestly hoping so, because in our next book in the series, and this is a planned book series, we're going to take our first flight with Pop Pop. So the kids are going to go to the airport and they're going to get on it, Pop Pop, and Pop Pop's going to talk to them as they come on the airplane. And so, yes, I, I really envision and I hope someday that these books end up in the back seat of the airplane so the kids can enjoy them in flight and the parents can read the books to the children and educate them on what's actually happening. Well, let's see if we can help make that happen. I, I, I certainly hope we can. And so I have a question. I mean, this you're familiar with Disney and Pixar Studios. I'm sure, Mike, you are as well. Well, let me ask this question of Mike. You you've have these wonderful illustrations. Pop-Pop has got a, an incredible personality. Who do you think should play Pop-Pop in the movie? Oh, man. I'm not even sure how to how to respond to that. That's a tough one. Did I put you on the spot? I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's just, it's hard to think of like who the voice of Pop-Pop would be. You know, he's, he's just such a, a bright character. I mean, I'm trying to think of, I can see a John Goodman or someone like that yeah. playing, playing yeah. him because I love his voice. Yeah, I can see that too. I could actually see that. I was just watching John Goodman in a, I guess he was on an HBO series and that nice deep voice. And, and by the way, Dan, you have a deep voice like John Goodman. So maybe you don't even need John. Oh, well, thank you. But yeah, I, I we'll see if we can get John Goodman. We, you know what you should do is send him a copy of the book. John, we were thinking about you. Oh, well, that would be great. That would, that, I mean, we're taking little steps here, but if Pixar were to become interested in our book, we would certainly love to collaborate with them on an effort. Sounds good. So you, you'd mentioned that there are other books being planned in the series. So what, do you have anything that you can share with us about what these might be? Or, Well, we plan a series, The Adventures of Pop Pop Airplane. And this first book in the series is to teach children about an airplane and how, how Pop Pop flies. And then, like I said, the second book will be this, you know taking the kids on a trip to the airport and flying on Pop Pop for the first time. And all the things that they would experience, not all the things, you, you couldn't be completely inclusive, but you know, the big highlighted things that the children will experience while they're at the airport, while they're flying, until they get to their destination. That's the idea for the second book. And then after that, it's going to be the adventures of Pop-Pop. Pop-Pop has lots of friends that he's made through the years. And we're going to introduce Pop-Pop's friends in books down the road, and they will start showing up in the books, The Adventures of Pop-Pop Airplane. Okay. Okay. I have an idea for you. You may have already thought of this, but it just seems so logical. You can tell me if I'm, Howard, you're, you don't know what you're talking about. You're crazy. The baggage, a piece of luggage going through the inside of the airport and all those conveyor belts and how they find their way on Pop-Pop Airplane. Uh, i tell you what, you could build a character around his trip from home through the airport into the belly of the airplane to the other end, down the belt loader, onto the luggage cart, and when the family actually claims the bag at baggage claim. That, I think that would be, that would make a fun movie, I'll tell you. Well, uh, I, I think I look forward to that. And just give me a, like a little sentence in the back of the book, you know, an acknowledgement, and that, that's, all, that's all it'll take. Listen, I, I really, really appreciate both of you taking time to come on to the podcast and chat about the book. This is truly been an enjoyable experience learning about how this idea came about into fruition. And again, you had this very successful book launch yesterday and the collaboration, Dan, with your with your nephew, Mike. I mean, that's just, that's a wonderful story in and of itself. And so just congratulations. And, and Mike, congratulations to you. I mean, I'm Really looking forward to seeing where this is going to go. Again, to our listeners, you've got to see these illustrations. They're wonderful. Before we close down this this episode, Dan, 
If our listeners would like to learn more about you and Pop Pop Airplane, where should they go? Well, we have a Facebook page, Pop Pop Airplane, and we also have our own website at danpegram.com, and that's where my press kit is, and there's a, a good Q&A session there that tells a lot about the background and, and how the idea came about. If people would like to read more about that and what our, what our whole plan is, we'll have uh, lots of photos along the way. Fantastic. And Mike, if our listeners would like to learn more about your illustration work and the the type of art that you do, what's the best place for them to learn more about you? You can see more of my work at Rebel Soul Studio on Instagram and also the same handle on Facebook. It's at Rebel Soul Studio there as well. That's excellent. Yeah. And we will provide uh, within the show notes, backlinks to the Facebook page, the website, as well as Rebel Soul Studios, and also to Amazon because we want to help you sell some books as well. And so our listeners will be able to click on any of these links and go to those pages directly. And, you know, I just had this idea. I'd love if you would gift us with a picture or two of this whole experience with your family or friends that we can include some couple pictures on our show notes as well. If you're willing to do that, I think that would be really special. We'll be very happy to do that, Howard. Thank you. So Dan and Mike, thank you so much for taking time again out of your mornings to spend with us on this Success Insight podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. And any any other closing thoughts before we head out or, you know, some insight to go, so to speak. We use that in many of our episodes or some tidbit, some piece of advice, some insight that you want to leave our listeners with. Dan, what are your thoughts? The children are little sponges. They, they learn through the things that we say, the things that we do. And I think it's very important to get in front of them books like this where they can they ha- can have a, a learning experience, see some beautiful artwork, and, and learn something along the way about something they don't maybe know enough about or know anything about. And it also gives the adults a way to answer their children's questions. Fantastic. Thank you. Mike, before we head out, anything you want to add? The biggest thing for me, I think, is just always kind of follow your passions, take a dream and just run with it and don't let anybody stop you. Gentlemen, that's the perfect way, I think, to end the show. And so again, we appreciate you taking the time today. Folks, there you have it. We've just been chatting with Dan Pegram, author of Pop Pop Airplane, How Do You Fly? He's been joined by his nephew, Mike Richardson, who is the illustrator of the book. Again, you've got to see this. This is wonderful. And We're going to share links back to the Facebook page, the web page, as well as Rebel Soul page for the show Mike's work. And you're going to get a link back to Amazon so you can kind of see the book. I mean, this is a perfect book for the holidays or any young child that wants to learn more about airplanes. And this just, it's wonderful. So do check it out. All right. It's Friday, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there and have a phenomenal day. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Success Insight Podcast. Take care now. Success Insight is a production of Fox Coaching and First Story Strategies. Find us online, successinsightpodcast.com.